Today's word is focus. So slowly take a deep breath in. And when you exhale, just think about focus. Take another deep breath in. And think about that one word, focus. And while you think about that word, just let your mind go. Take another deep breath in. And think of that one word, focus, and let it lead you to wherever you need it to lead you to. And as we take this last deep breath, the word focus and allow it to take you wherever you need it to be in the moment. And as you exhale, for the week, Think of the word focus. Namaste. I was minding my own business, minding my business, doing what God had to do. And I was hit on the Mirror Parkway. My car totaled. Every airbag in the car deployed except for one. When the EMT arrived, they said, you're lucky to be here because if it was any other vehicle, your neck would have been broken. So I want to say again, namaste, my Salbona this morning. Praise be to God. You don't know what someone has to go through to get here. It does not look easy from this side. But to you all, it looks so evident that we get up here and we say the things we say to make you all feel good when we are in our body not feeling good. But we stand before God, giving him the ultimate praise. When I went to look at that vehicle to get my belongings, I left the belongings in the car and I walked away with my life, God. 
thank you for doing what you do because it lets me know even in the pain I still can move forward doing what God has assigned me to do. He assigned me to do it. So this morning, God, I thank you for anyone that is questioning their assignment. As in the assignment in Matthew 17, 1 and 9, this is the affirmation of the assignment. Father, I ask that your people see you in this testimony and not Tanya, not Minister Tanya. They see you, God. And I thank you. I give you the praise. I give you the glory and I give you the honor. If anyone is questioning who they are in you, look at the testimonies that they can see, feel, smell, and hear in your great name, God. I thank you. The name that I believe, I thank you as we welcome you in this place. We praise you in this place and we honor you. Namaste. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. There's nothing like being able to get up and just give God glory despite all the things that you might be wrestling with. There is no greater moment that we have in when we can come together and just raise our voices and shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for my health, God. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you that everything that I'm going through is not taking me down. Thank you for making a way out of no way. God, we come to say we thank you. We bless your holy name today because you alone deserve the glory. Come on, anybody feel like giving God some praise with us this morning? You at home, welcome to Mount Airy. We welcome you. We ask you to come on and be free. Just set yourself free right now because we come to worship. And we want to encourage you, Minister Tanya, fight on. We want to encourage everybody in this place, no matter what you're going through, come on and fight on. God got all things in his hands, and he's ready and able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Come on, Minister Wanda. Hallelujah.
to you, God. Come on, can you just lift your hands and say, all the glory? Come on and say, all the honor belongs to you, God. Come on, say it again. Say, all the glory, all the honor, all the worship, God, all of my praise. Come on, begin to tell him, all of my praise belongs to you. No matter what's happening, God, we will stand and declare that you are holy. Come on, Sister Kel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you can help us say it. Yes. My hallelujah, my hallelujah. Come on, Lord. If you got a hallelujah in your spirit, you ought to stand on your feet and say it. My hallelujah, my hallelujah, belongs hallelujah. to you. After all you've been through, you still put a hallelujah in your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and say it. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands all over the room. Lift your voice and say, you deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, all my worship, Lord. You deserve it. All of my praise. Yes, you do, Jesus. Hey, all of the glory. Come on, Lord, we give you all the glory. Say, no one else deserves it, Lord. All the glory. You, Jesus. All the glory belongs to you. Now lift your voice and say, You deserve it. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Yes, you deserve 
I will always worship you. Oh God, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Come on, you say that. As long I will not be silent. I will. Come on. To the Lord, tell him I will always worship you. And long as I got breath in my body, God, yeah, I will. Come on, come on, say it. One more time, come on and say, I will not be silent, Lord.
adore you. What more time do you deserve? Yes, you do. Oh, Lord, we love you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Yes, I yes, can you deserve it. Be silent. I will always worship, worship you. Long as we're breathing today, God. Yes, I am. I am. I will be in a moment. I will always worship you. Can you say it from your heart? Thank you that even when we, in our own ignorance, our own partial understanding, gave what was really yours to other people and other places and other things and other institutions, thank you that you kept on providing for us. You kept on providing air for us to breathe. You kept on making a way out of no way until we came to ourselves to realize we don't need to give it to them. We need to give it to you. So God, we ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ. We thank you and we pray. Amen. If you're glad to be in God's house on today, I am, I am thankful and I am grateful to God 
uh, for God's presence and God's uh, power in this space and in this space. Come on, let's thank God for what God is doing. I am thankful those uh, I'm going to ask though that we join and thank God for those who are viewing online. Thank God for you. Those of you who are online may not be able to see. Um, we have our brother Donovan uh, who is with us and working with Deacon De CJ and brother Aaron Rogers. You'll see him. You'll see a little bit more of him. So I know somebody said, who that strange man that taking them videos, all right? He's trying to do assessment to make sure we can make sure we're all right. Amen? Amen. Let's get into the word of God, the word of God. Some of you all saw me standing a little bit longer than I did in the last couple of weeks. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the PT person said, you stand a little, you sit a little bit. or stand a little bit, so it's all right. Amen? Matthew, the 17th chapter, will be moving in between Matthew and Luke, but uh, for the purpose of this reading, Matthew, the 17th chapter. Matthew, the 17th chapter, beginning with verse number one. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, brother, of James and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as right as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Verse 6. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Do not be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. One of the talks I believe God's spirit should guide from the thought, affirmation for the assignment. Affirmation for the assignment. For today within many Protestant and Catholic liturgical calendar circles, it is known as Transfiguration Sunday. Transfiguration Sunday recalls the events that took place that you hear here in the text between Jesus and a small group of disciples who were gathered on Mount Tabor. The term transfiguration means a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. For it was there on the mountain where Jesus was transformed and glorified in such a way that God gave the message to the disciples that this was God's beloved son and they were to listen to him. As I've stated earlier, that we find this story uh, in the first nine verses of this chapter 17 of, God, of the Gospel of Matthew, <clears throat> which is also in the Gospel of Luke. And while we might be referring to it over the course of this passage, our focal passage is in this 
gospel as recorded by Matthew. And one of the powerful points of this passage of scripture is that unlike the time in which Jesus was baptized and God spoke directly to him and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God affirmed Jesus's worth and witness before Jesus had performed any public miracle and any public in ministry. And let that be an encouragement to each of us to know that God will affirm our worth and God's pleasure in us independent of our productivity. Let me say that again. God will affirm who you are independent of what you do which might remind those of us who are recovering workaholics uh, that we don't need to, nor can we earn God's pleasure primarily through our efforts. For the foundation of God's pleasure and love for us is just to be received. Let me help somebody in here as we move in the midst of uh, Black History Month in on our way to Women's History Month, where we acknowledge the work of women in the life of this community, this church, and this world. That we are good, but none of us are God. And we ought to remember that God loves us, not because of what we do, but God loves us because God loves us. My God. And the more we can center our relationship in the fact that God loves us, independent. Not that God does not want us to do good works, but the basis of God's love for us is found in the nature of who God is. And so, as we reflect upon the text, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. God spoke to him and affirmed him as God's son. However, in this context, in Matthew, on the mount of what we call transfiguration, the message was not primarily uh, intended for Jesus. It wasn't for the affirming of Jesus for Jesus' sake, but rather the message was to acknowledge the glory of Jesus to the disciples. And because of this, the disciples were to be affirmed and confirmed that Jesus was the one. Regardless of what had happened before, Jesus was the one. Jesus was the chosen one to lead them and all of God's people to salvation and liberation. And yet the interesting thing to note in this text is uh, there are seasons in which uh, God will affirm you to you. And then there are seasons in which God will affirm you to other people. Preach, Bennett. God will affirm you to the people you are called to minister to and receive ministry and you are assigned to. See, I'm preaching to somebody today here and online <clears throat> For the text does not say that Jesus did not engage in ministry up on that mountain. The text says that Jesus engaged in ministry and God on that mountain affirmed God's work through him to the disciples. The work that Jesus did on that mountain was for the benefit of the disciples who would carry on the work. Sometimes the work that Jesus does in our life is not just for us, but it is so that somebody might come to know who Jesus is through the work that we do. And it is my prayer uh, that you will allow God's Holy Spirit to help you hear God affirm you to you and also in the midst of doing your assignment that God will help others to know that God is working in your life as well and within them. And so in our text, uh, God does just that for the disciples. God gives the disciples glimpses 
of God's glory from an encounter that Jesus has in the midst that reveals for them who Jesus is and what Jesus has been assigned to do. For earlier in the chapter, uh, Jesus, in this pericope, Jesus uh, uh, experienced firsthand the power that comes from being followers of Jesus in that they performed miracle in chapter 16, miracle and cast out demons uh, uh, out while proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. Uh, the disciples also witnessed Jesus's teaching and healing among the crowd of people to the point that Jesus showed them again that God would provide the resources needed to feed the thousands of people uh, who had come to be blessed and made whole. And then following the foretelling of the destiny uh, that Luke speaks to us about the death on the cross and yet his ultimate success through the resurrection from the grave. Matthew tells us that some six days later, Jesus takes a few disciples up on the mount, Mount Tabor, took Peter, James, and John with him to pray, which ought to teach us that the affirmation of our assignment uh, will have us constantly on the pathway of prayer that allows us to become more and more aware of what God is up to. Luke and Matthew, Luke in verses 28 and 29, and Matthew uh, writes in verses, the first verse, uh, that when Jesus had gone up on the mountain to pray, it was his prayer time on the mountain uh, that began not just to shift the atmosphere around him, it began to change his face and how he looked in his clothes. Somebody knows that sometimes prayer can change how you see yourself and prayer can change how other people can see you. It ought to help somebody to know that even if you are in a bad and frowning kind of mood, Prayer can help change your face. It can change how you look on the outside. Anybody ever had somebody, not y'all here, but back in the day, somebody growing up, uh, whenever we had a bad attitude, somebody who was an adult would always say, you better fix your face or I'll fix it for you. None of y'all, none of y'all, none of y'all. That was West Coast. That was, that was West Coast. My mama say, don't be telling our business, boy. That was my daddy. That's right. Thank you, baby. We know prayer can change your faith. Anybody know that when you pray, sometimes we talk about <clears throat> the, the kind of consonants, but, but if you pray in sincerity, prayer has a way of changing your mood and changing your attitude and changing your perspective. And so in this text, Luke and Matthew tell us uh, that as Jesus was praying, a kind of spiritual space and dimensional alignment was created such that both Elijah and the great leader Moses appeared before Jesus. Hear this, y'all. Now, to be sure, uh, they had both passed from this present life of the text, yet according to Luke, they were both engaged in a very lively conversation with Jesus, which helps us to see here, y'all, the African concept of talking to the ancestors is also seen in the biblical narrative. Stop letting other folk define your faith. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So that even when people seek to deny the African origin of many of the biblical stories and geographic connections, we can show them that the remnants of the African culture run throughout the original biblical narrative. That's why, whether we admit it or not, many of our people and even some of us up in here and online 
uh, we see and know talking to some of our ancestors uh, who have been may have been physically gone some time ago, and yet their presence still informs what we do right now. And yet Matthew tells us uh, that their conversation was so powerful and purposeful in that they spoke to Jesus about the fulfillment of his earthly assignment and then his departure back to heavenly dwelling. And while they are talking, the text says that the disciples discover that if they were to understand the affirmation of the assignment, uh, then they must persevere uh, until they can proceed. For we understand both in Luke and Matthew's perspective, the description of the encounter, uh, it, it, he feels some nuances. Both of them share this story from different perspectives. For in his rendition, uh, he tells us that Peter and James and John were tired and sleepy, and yet they were weary, and yet they, what, from what they had experienced, uh, and their, prob their bodies were probably ready to fall asleep. And yet the commentary on them was that although they were very sleepy, uh, when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two elders, ancestors, standing among them. Although they were tired, they continued to press their way until they were fully awake. And when they were fully awake, they saw another dimension of God's glory. See, y'all with, with me. The, the text nuanced what uh, happened when Luke says, when they were fully awake, which suggests they may have dozed off. Anybody know that even in your best intention to stay focused on, on something that you know will bless you, sometimes you might find yourself dozing off some good program, some, some good prayer time. Matter of fact, uh, maybe a couple of y'all may even find yourself dozing off in church service. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I ain't busting you out. I ain't, I ain't bust. I ain't even asking you to turn to somebody. <laughs> Listen, I'm on this chair. I feel kind of comfortable here. And yet, brothers and sisters, though the text and Luke, more so than Matthew in this text, nuances for us uh, that when they became fully awake, that even as they moved and zigzagged out of their prayer time, it ought to tell us that even if and or when our weariness causes us to sleep on what God is up to, if we persevere, that is, if we never give up, if we endure the ebbs and flows of our journey and not have this illusion that as a believer in Christ, you have to always be up because I think I've got some folk who show enough no God is in your life, but every day with Jesus ain't necessarily sweeter than the day before. Sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's weary, sometimes you lose focus, but somebody knows I don't believe he's brought me this far. To leave me, I'm going to keep on pushing, keep on striving. Until we see another dimension of God's glory manifest in our lives as the disciples did. See, know that the Holy Spirit gives us permission uh, that we don't have to perpetuate. We don't have to pretend that, that we're always on because truth of the matter, no one person is always on all the time. We have ebbs and flows in the midst of our journey with Jesus <sighs> to understand. See, see, I, I love this text. I love both the way uh, Luke and Matthew nuance this in their own particular perspectives. For it tells us that as the ancestors were leaving Peter, James, and John were so blown away by what they were experiencing, y'all. Peter spoke up and said, why don't we just, Lord, just, why don't you just let us build three altars, one for each of you? Now, in one sense, you need to understand, brothers and sisters, I'm, I got to have some teaching fun here. 
<sighs> Notice if the text, that's a very reasonable ritual to follow given the African Jewish history of building altars to honor those who have gone on to the next life. Y'all need to hear me. I'm, I'm trying to free some of us here. And yet you need to understand, Matthew says in verse five, he tells us that as he was speaking, the voice from the, crowd, from the cloud made the divine declaration that this is my beloved son in whom I love and am well pleased. Now hear this. This blew me away, sister. This blew me away. Here it is. They see Moses and Elijah in all right. And yet the moment that they hear the voice from the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, they get terrified. Y'all got to see this. I got to tell, I got my witness before I leave this place. But, but, but now here it is. This ought to teach us that under the, under the African understanding of communicating with the ancestors in this life was a normal ritual that did not intimidate Peter, James, or John. That they were all right with having a conversation with Moses and Elijah who were dead and gone. And yet when the voice of God said, this is my beloved son, they got upset. They got frightened. And I have a transparent moment sometime. I'm going to tell my story in a minute. But, but how many of us know that this is the text? That, that once you finish this life, it ain't, the, oh, it ain't the end of your life. It ain't the end. I know we believe in life everlasting, but, but this text speaks. Hear this. A part of God's affirmation of his son included talking to the ancestors that, they, that Peter, James, and John understood who they were. There was a way in which Peter, James, and John were affirmed in who Jesus was by talking to Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah helped Peter, James, and John understand what Jesus' message was all about. I'm preaching in here. See, that's Nancy, I thought about the fact that perhaps the reason why they were terrified is because the voice behind the cloud contained, had an accent of an authority and an accountability on their part. Talking with the ancestors is one level of accountability, but when you know you're talking to God and God is going to hold you accountable for what you've experienced. And so no wonder the text says, Matthew picked it up, that they fell on their feet. They were terrified. They fell on their feet. They didn't understand what was happening. They fell on their feet because they understood they would be held uh, to another level of accountability of how they stewarded what they had experienced. And yet in verse 6, it tells us that Jesus responds. Jesus is still there. And Jesus says, get up. And they like Jesus. We be all like, oh yeah. Jesus said, get up. You had just experienced something. Get up. And don't be afraid. Wow. That's a word for those of us who are hearing God in this moment, yet we can project our fears on the word of God. Peter, James, and John just had an encounter with God, and yet they have projected their own fears on the word that God spoke. 
And so Jesus had to, to engage in a course correction because he didn't want them to miss the moment and the meaning. He said, stop laying down, get up, and don't be afraid. Go through this, though you'll go through a season, uh, as you, God speaks to us, and when we are tempted to feel down because of the struggles uh, that we might have with our assignments, we need to hear the word of the Lord say, get up. Don't be afraid. Get up in this moment. Get up in your situation. Get up in your terms of expectations. Get up in your commitment. Get up in your understanding. Get up in your dedication. Don't be afraid. Get up. Get up in the moment that God has for you. Now, I'm done. I'm done. There's a little bit more I want to share, but, but let me tell you my story. Tell you my story. A couple weeks, last month, last month, I was in, uh, I engaged in a virtual intensive session with our D-Men Doctrine of Ministry cohort. People from all over the country, about 50 folks were there online. We were being led throughout the week. Uh, through various presentations and authors, some of whom um, you've heard, some of whom I've shared. And in the midst of that week-long nine to four experience, we came to the last day. When we came to the last day, we had so many powerful, powerful insights and lessons. About 45, 50 people were on that time. Our own cohort, all three years of cohorts, our cohort, about 15 students, so about 30, 40 students and faculty from the ITC and, and the leaders. And we were engaging in our closing ritual, closing ritual. And Dr. Itahari Torre, who's been here at Mount Airy, blessed our group virtually and had all of us uh, here this great song that spoke about um, the fact that we belong here. No matter what struggle we may have had in class, no matter what struggles the students may have had to be there, no matter what struggle it was when you unlearned something in order to learn something new had been, and some students thought that they were going to have to just back out. But Dr. Ture centered all of our spirits and helped all of the students understand they belong in this program. The world, the church needed what their projects are going to be about. And as we were preparing to leave Friday late morning to leave our Zoom week, one of our dear brothers who's from Ghana, who is a ritualist, who is a, a meditation leader, he began to speak to us and allow the music to play. And he began to engage in, in, with us in a meditation exercise. And we all had to close our eyes and we were asked, invited to close our eyes if we allowed ourselves. And as we closed our eyes, we were uh, invited uh, to connect with what Dr. Ture had spoken to us about, the fact that there were 12 generations of ancestors that lived in order for us to be where we are. That we're not by ourselves. We belong where we need to be here because of all the sacrifices of all those who have come all the way. And so while uh, this brother was engaging us in this meditation exercise, he was calling us to close our eyes and then calling us uh, to imagine that uh, that we were at the baobab tree in Africa, great strong tree, has so many, uh, so many metaphorical truths. And as we were, each of us, meditating on being there and connecting to, with what Dr. Ture said, he said, I, I want you to imagine what it's like to see uh, uh, your great grandmother on your grandmother's side, on your mother's side, and your great grandmother on your father's side, and your great grandfather on your mother's side, and your great grandfather on your 
father's side. And he began to speak it. And he said, as you're feeling them and their presence, I want you to feel it. And then he spoke and he talked about uh, 12 generations. And in my own personal experience, I know the physical images of at least my great, great grandparents on my mother and father's side. And so as we were engaged in this conversation, I was in my office and in my office here at Mount Airy, I was in my chair, I was in my desk. I was on my desk, sitting near my desk on my chair. And while he was speaking this, he said, if you can, I want you to take a pen and I want you to write uh, a piece of paper and write what you're experiencing. And as I was thinking about that, he said, some of you may not uh, be able to do that and that's all right. And he spoke about me because in that moment, brothers and sisters, I could not take out a pen. In that moment, I could not write anything down. In that moment, all I could feel and sense in my spirit that there were uh, there were more and dozens and dozens of my ancestors wrapped all around me. And I will share this with you. Even online, I share this story proudly because it's in this text. All I felt, I could not write because all I felt, brothers and sisters, were, were my ancestors, my grandmama Adela and my grandfather. All I could do is to feel their spirit saying, we got you, son. We got you, son. Stand in your call. We got you, son. We got you, son. And tears began to roll down. I began to sob like a little child because I had to realize that I was not by myself. I had to realize, ah, and then it hit me. It hit me. It hit me. Well, Sister Dorcas White and I have spoken about for years the danger of losing the strength and the essence of what the historical black church has been. It hit me that so many of us are so disconnected from the very help and support that the ancestors have to offer us that this version of Christianity that makes you can disconnect with the very source of your power, the very source of understanding, your ancestors have wisdom, your ancestors have life experience, our ancestors, the ancestors of this congregation have so much to offer us, so much to teach us, we have to stop allowing other people's version of the Christian faith to make us deny what we know is true, what we know to be real, what we know. Our children are drowning. We are in depression. All because we won't let ourselves do. Because some white folks say that ain't what Jesus was talking about. Them white folks don't know. We know what's true. You know what's true. You don't serve them. You serve God. But God uses them to speak words of life and instruction to us for the living of these days. I'm not going to ask y'all because I already know it's true. Some of y'all know your ancestors have guided you, have spoken words of peace to you. Stop letting distorted versions of the Christian faith make you forget what the scriptures are even saying. It was because of their encounter with Moses and Elijah that was a normal thing that they understood so that even when God said, this is my beloved son, Hear this, and this is the anchoring. They, they didn't have a problem with the ancestors, Elijah and Moses. 
sometimes when God answers your prayer, that's, that's sometimes when we get afraid. But, but anchor what you hear from the Lord, what you hear from God, with the words of the Lord, which says, get up, don't be afraid. Well, if I hear from my answer, that means I'm about to die. No, they didn't die. They had much more work to do. When you hear from the ancestor, it doesn't mean you're going to die. It doesn't mean something bad's going to happen. Now, let me be clear. I ground whatever I say, and it's in this text, with the Christ spirit. I'm not just talking about any kind of spirit. I'm talking about Jesus, the Jesus spirit. Jesus the Christ. That's what we ground our faith. And so if Jesus could talk to Elijah and Moses and the ancestors to gain clarity, then so can you and I as disciples of Jesus the Christ. And the text says that as they, as they moved, as they moved, they both paused, pondered, and they developed a level of praise. I can't tell you the joy, I can't tell you the power that I have felt knowing that, that there's a whole community of people for whom got my back. So that even when I want to stop, I hear my grandmama, my grandmama, Mama Adela, and her words when she says, how you doing, boy? I say, ma'am, I'm all right. She say, yeah, I know you're all right, because I'm praying for you. That's why you're doing all right. And if we tell the truth, a part of us celebrating 100 years is no, yes, we got to live our life. No, I'm not talking about them living through us and for us. But I'm saying that their witness ought to inform and affirm the assignment that God has for us. And it is my prayer, as I'm, I was listening on the, on the way over here and I'm done, um, <clears throat> my mama said, uh, you've been, you, you know, she's been tuning in. She said, you've been preaching good, but you know, you've been preaching longer since you've been in your chair. Only a parent could tell you that, huh? You say, you've been preaching good, but you've been preaching long. You've been preaching long. And, and I think a part of this posture for me is I got to teach and preach. When they're talking about taking uh, black history off the shelves, and some of us love to go to Florida, and yet even in that country, yeah, I know the, the, the board has actually sort of negated, but doesn't mean Ron DeSantis and others are not going to try other ways. It means that we need to be mindful. I wasn't here, I was in Los Angeles, but there was a way in which the churches did not leave everything up to the school system. That there are ways in which back in the days, I'm not talking about, you know, blissful nostalgia, but I am talking about there were a cluster of churches in Bridgeport that taught religious education. They weren't just going to leave it up to the school system, but you were going to do it yourself. And uh, I am even more committed as I hear and see what's happening around. Uh, we're going to push, we, our educators going to push to have curriculum that speaks our story and our truth. But whether they do it or not, as long as I'm here, and the spirit of the Lord guides, we're going to do black history when and wherever we need to to teach our children who we are and what God has done for us. That's why we made it 100 years. That's why we've made it 100 years. So every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed. I close. Maybe this is your word today, brother. Let me be clear. I'm not asking anybody to take the word of your ancestor over the word of Jesus. I'm not asking anybody 
to engage in what has been misinterpreted as ancestral worship. But I am saying that a part of my lament, even while I was celebrating the fact, and it wasn't my first time having that kind of experience, but I also lamented because I thought about that scripture or that song, that verse that says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I also thought about that as it relates to the peace we forfeit because we disconnect ourselves from the ancestors that want to help us, that want to guide us and affirm us so that they are part of that great cloud of witnesses that, that cheer us on. So that as we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we will be able to run the race that is assigned to us. If you've got breath in your body, wherever you are, you've got breath in your body, that means you still have an assignment. That means you still got stuff to do. And yes, while some church fathers, some historians have made this transfiguration story just about the disciples hearing and seeing who Jesus actually was and following him. But don't, don't minimize the African rituals and norms that were included. That is the talking to the ancestors, being affirmed in what you're doing by the spirit of the ancestors. And we don't have to, we don't have to be forced to choose. We can love Jesus with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and we can honor the tradition that has kept us connected, even in the midst of some of the harshest times. And I got a feeling that though we don't always talk about it, because sometimes to talk about it means people will question your faith, but I need you to know you have safe space today. You have safe space in this space. You have safe space. You're not going to be called a heretic. You're not going to be laughed at, whether you're in person or online. I'm not going to ask you to wait to, to, to raise your hand. I know, because some of you have talked to me about it, and we've had some conversations. It's consistent with this passage of Scripture. But as every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Maybe this was your word today. Because God does want to affirm your assignment. But God will do it in ways that on some level, some of us have been taught are not necessarily of God. But in this text, it is of God. God uses the ancestors to speak word of affirmation to us. Maybe this is your word. You just want some prayer. Just lift your hand if, if that's the case. I see you. I see you. I see you in the balcony. I see you. I see you in the back. I see you. I see you on the floor. I see you on the main floor. I see you. God, I pray in your name. Your name that is from the beginning. I come thanking you for this biblical story. This biblical story that speaks how you use the testimonies and the stories and the wisdom from those who have journeyed with you. That's why you didn't mind when we said when the biblical characters would would remember every generation by saying the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That even the ancestors, we thank you for being the God of our ancestors. The God of Wilson, the God of Bass, the God, the God of Smalls, the God even of our present elder, Elder Streets. Thank you that as we come 
even to this season of celebrating 100 years. We thank you for the men and women who are now part of that great cloud of witnesses. But God, they still have word for us on how we trust you, how we depend upon you, and how we will not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. So God, use the ancestors, use your Holy Spirit through the ancestors to teach us not to faint, to remind us that you are with us and stir us up enough so that we can continue the assignments that each of us have for our lives. Some of our assignments are more public than others, but, but each of us have a significant assignment, an assignment that is worth something. And so God, I pray God, that we might hear the ancestors speak so that even when they're no longer with us, and when it's Jesus, Jesus in our prayer time speaks and say, get up. Don't wallow in, in what you don't have. Don't wallow in the fear of what you feel may happen. Get up. Face your assignment. Do what you've been assigned to do. Trust that God and the ancestors will guide and direct you. So that you too, when it is yours to go from this life to life everlasting, might be able to have that same kind of positive influence on the generations to come. In the name of Jesus the Christ, bless every spirit right now. Bless every person right now. Cover them, strengthen them, provide for them, protect them. Yes, there may be some spirits that are not of the Christ spirit. God, give us discernment and then help us to rebuke and to release those spirits that are not of the Christ spirit. But thank you, God, that when Jesus came, he said, I have sheep not of this fold, which says that we must always walk in a spirit of humility, realizing that you will talk to us, yes, but you will talk to other people in other ways. And we must develop a humility in how we judge other people's conversation with you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God for the word of God even on today. That is who you are. I'm going to ask that you prepare your elements. Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You're a waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We're thankful that our journey toward wholeness includes the Mount of Transfiguration. And for, while for Jesus and the disciples, it took place on the Mount, others of us, it will take place in our office, in our home, in our car. Thank you. In whatever space and place it takes place, we're acknowledging in Jesus we will be made whole to Jesus. Jesus. 
So much blood has been shed. So much, so many lives have been forfeited. We're thankful that the blood of Jesus will never lose its power to cover us, to keep us, to sustain us to Jesus. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time, we, we make a. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God for the word of God. On today, I am thankful and grateful for your prayers and presence, whether you're in person or online. Thank God for you. Um, we want to keep all the families going through bereavement in prayer. Um, Michelle Bryant Perkins on the loss of her mother uh, in Michigan. Yes, want to continue to keep her in prayer. Keep her in prayer uh, and Todd and the whole family in prayer. Um, we want to uh, continue to lift all the families that have been going through bereavement in prayer. Uh, on this Friday, we will celebrate the life of Baba Jack Tanisi Davis here. The viewing will be from 11 to 12. The service will be at 12 noon here. Um, in honor of, of, of Baba's uh, love and participation um, in, in leadership in our Ma'afa commemoration, uh, we are preparing um, to present, I spoke with um, <clears throat> uh, Reverend Anderson and uh, Sister Gina LaVon Simpson. They are requesting all uh, cast and crew who desire, who, is able, who are able to come, um, to come Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to engage in what we call a royal procession. Um, we are going, they're going, there's going to be a special musical uh, tribute. Uh, one, of the ba one of the foundational songs of, of Ma'afa. Ma uh, and we're going to be engaged in a procession while that song is being uh, sung. Uh, and we're gonna ask everyone that's participating to come in all white, all white, all white. The rehearsal for that, the mapping and just rehearsal of that is going to be Wednesday at 7 p.m. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Wednesday at what? 7 p.m. All cast and crew. All cast and crew. Um, Brother William and Brother Stevenson and the music ministry is going to be working on a song that we all know and uh, has, has blessed uh, all the people that have come. So they'll be working on the song and cast and crew will be processing, do a special royal procession. Uh, in, in honor of, of Baba Tanisi, who is now on his journey um, for to become ancestor. And so we are thankful and grateful for him. Um, that is on Friday. On Thursday, Pastor Gabby um, Kojo Wilkes and Andrew Wilkes will be with us Thursday at 7. You know, we have a lot of activities. But uh, this is a great season, and I pray that you will sacrifice all you can to, to come and participate. Going to have a great time. I don't know how many. I don't have the book with me. Um, I don't know how many of you all have uh, the book, Songs for Black Lives. That's their book. If you need to purchase it, if you need to purchase it, thank you. Thank you, Don. This is my clean copy, right? My clean copy. She switched my copy. She switched my copy. All right. So, so we want we want to we want to support again two young black young preachers 
who are doing great job trying to continue the work of liberation for our people. Amen. 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 So, so, so we ask that you please come, whether you purchase the book or not, please come so that uh, they're connected, uh, they're connected to not only to us, but Pastor Portia Williams and that whole generation. Um, so please, brother, please just to come Wednesday, 7 p excuse me, Thursday, 7 p.m. Thursday, 7 p.m. All right. Uh, I'm going to hold on to this for a minute. Um, Red Lip Theology Luncheon, please, if you're interested, March 25th, uh, our sister Candace Bimbo will share us in partnership with GBAP. And we're thankful for that. Registration is a free event, but registration first come, first serve. Thank you for all your tithes and offerings. Continue to please do that. Uh, I want to thank our um, warming and cooling center uh, coordinators. We, the, it, it was open this week for those in this um, sort of frigid weather. So thank you all for all that you do. Our church staff, thank God for you. You can see I have this wonderful T-shirt. Sweatshirt, long sleeve t-shirt, all right. So we ask that you please, that you please, uh, if you desire, I guess see you, right? See, who do they see? See, all right, see uh, Deidre, if you're online, you can, um, you can go online and, and purchase them so that we can just celebrate what God has done these hundred years at Mount Airy, amen? Amen. Amen. I think that is it. Again, I want to thank God for our ushers, our security. Thank God for our nurses aid, our first aiders. Thank God for our musicians and our praise team for this week. Thank God for our audio. We working it out, y'all. We working it out. Working it out so that uh, we can provide uh, good, good, good quality, good quality sound and, vis and visual presentation. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to ask uh, Zaneri, uh, Whittington, and family if they would come down. Zaneri, Whittington, and family if they will come down. As we prepare to stand, go down. Did I, are there any visitors? Are there any visitors in the house? If you're visiting, just lift your hand. All right, got the home team. All right, hey y'all, hey y'all. All right, hey y'all. Hey. Zanai, I don't know why. What did I? You know who I was thinking? Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking about Zanari. Zanai, and I got Zanai right here. I know you, bro. I know you. Yeah. All right, Zanai. We thank God for you, brother. Um, you have been, we have watched you grow in this ministry. We've watched you grow. We've watched you struggle. And as I thought about it, I thank you because you have developed and manifested over these years that you've been with us a level of courage that some of our adults have not had. So thank you. I thank you for being the witness and putting yourself out there and working with the young people and running around and all that stuff back in the day when you were young, girl. And now I want to thank you even more so. And I'm going to thank you in, in stereo. I'm going to say thank you, young brother. But I really want to say thank you, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. 
Because you looking to enlist in the Marines is a sir move. particularly with the history, any veteran, any particular Marines, all right, veterans, all right, listen. So you get older, you get wiser, I pray, hopefully. My wisdom is I have even deeper respect for the men and women who fight for the right for others to have across this world, across this world. And yet we still struggle for some of those same rights here in America right now. And yet you are willing to fight anyway. Brother, we salute you. We thank you, sir. Because a whole lot of folk talk a whole lot of stuff but when it comes time to step up and put up, all right, a whole lot of folk back out. So our prayer is a prayer of the ancestors. It is, is a prayer that God keeps you. It is a prayer that God sustain you. It is a prayer that God covers you. It is a prayer that says, God, some of us don't believe in the violence. And yet we respect the men and women who will defend our country. And you put yourself in the ranks of those men and women. So God, in the name of Jesus, cover our dear brother, Sinai. Cover him right now, God. Cover him. Strengthen him. Help him to know you go with him. Help him to know that you will raise up elders, and yes, even in the times of need, you will raise up the spirit of the ancestors who also had the courage, the strength, and the integrity to fight battle. So God, I pray in your name that you might cover, provide for him. But God, not only him, I pray for this family. You know what they feel. You know the mixture of emotions that they have. And yet, you know that when we have an assignment, we must move forward. And so we affirm this assignment right now. And we pray that you cover this family, that you be with them right now. That you bring him back to us alive. That you bring him back to us so that he can continue to tell the story, to testify, to be a witness to the young people even as he was witness to when he was that younger person. That younger person in the youth retreats, the younger person singing, the younger person being that usher, the younger person seeking to challenge some of us adults so that we walk the way we proclaim that we need to walk. I pray God that you cover him, cover his family. Bring him back to us safe. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. God be praised. I share. Love you, man. Let me hug you. Let me hug you. Come on. Let me hug you. Love you, man. Love you. He's taller than you now. I remember. I remember. Amen. Amen. 
Have we not had a good time in the name of the Lord? I tell you what, I know some of y'all say, man, pastor, you preaching and teaching with that chair. I say, I'm going to give myself a couple more weeks. Then I'm going to see what the doctor say. But I feel I feel better. So but I'm not. You know what the doc, you know what we say? Um, doctor says, take the medicine until it's, it's done. We take the medicine until we don't feel it no more. I'm, I'm going to take the medicine until the doctor say, don't take it no more. Amen. Amen. Always remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Always remember. Always remember. Jesus. Jesus. Always remember. Much prayer, much power. We're praying people with a powerful witness of the perfect God. God bless you. Go in peace and power. God bless you. God keep you. All right, Doc. 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 Thank you, Doc. I'm trying to make it work. I'm trying to make it work, Doc. Let me do this.